Good morning, everybody. Uh, does, before we begin, does anyone have a moral objection to prezies or motion sickness? Because I know so, sometimes the zooming around can cause people to get dizzy, but uh, if there are no objections, I'll start. Uh, my speech is called Untapped Potential. And before you get any ideas, it's not a motivational speech uh, where you unleash your <laughs> untapped potential, though you might feel motivated afterwards. I'm not exactly sure. That's up to you. Uh, my name is Matt Hoover, and I am a recent graduate of Crane University. And the second title of my speech is called Analyzing Beer Data So You Can Drink Smarter. All right. Like I mentioned, there are two things I learned in college since I just graduated from college. Data. Data is something I learned to really love in college. Uh, by the way, this picture is the first thing that comes up in Google when you type in data. So apparently that's what data is, a bunch of zeros and ones. Uh, so I started off as a political science major because I wanted to get involved in politics. I wanted to do maybe law or something like that. Uh, what I didn't anticipate happening is that I would be more interested in the science part of political science than the actual politics. I just love doing data analysis, looking at survey data. Um, kind of doing the stats stuff, oh, I, it's just so much fun, and I never realized that I would, I'd love that so much. So going to college, I was pre-law, and ending up in college, I was more focused on the data science side. So I really focused on that um, throughout my time at college, uh, taking a lot of electives that weren't part of my major just so I could learn about all the, all the cutting-edge data science stuff. The other thing I learned in college, um, cliche, uh, beer, I mean, insert all your cliches here, but I, I learned, initially I had thought that there was only like Bud Light in the world. Then I realized there are craft beers everywhere, and it's great. There's so much you can do with um, different craft beers all over, all over the country. Um, and, I, and I learned to expand my, my small um, selection of beers to a much wider variety. Uh, and my senior year of college, I lived a block away from the Crescent Moon. Uh, does anyone know what the, has anyone been, spent many, okay, this is good. So, th knowing that I spent my senior year a block away from the crescent moon will probably help explain this next graph, which is my personal spending at the crescent moon over the last semester of college. So, that, as you can tell, there's a directly, inversely linear relationship between the amount of money I spent monthly at the moon and the months until graduation. So the blue line is months until graduation. The red line is monthly spending at the moon. Um, fortunately, that spending has tapered off since then. I've been able to save money since then. But uh, the thing I love about data is that you can tell stories about it. You can tell insights that people wouldn't otherwise see. They, they just see a, an Excel spreadsheet of numbers. And you, you think, oh, that's boring. But if you can visualize it, if you can, if you can look at it in the right way, you can really see some cool data. You can really see some cool things from your data. Um, you can tell stories. And so the story that we're going to look at today has three characters. Uh, one of them is untapped. Sorry, the zooming isn't working quite right. But who here has heard of or uses untapped? All right, so that's about half. Uh, untapped, for anyone that doesn't know, is a app on iOS and Android where you check in beers. You search for your beers and you check it in. Um, and then it provides a log over time. You can you add where you're drinking at, whether it's like at, a, at your house or a bar or at a festival. You can add a photo to document it. It's kind of like uh, photo blogging for beer drinking. Um, an important part is you can rate it. So you can rate it on a scale of 1 to 5 with increments of 0.25. Um, and then you can also see what other people have rated it globally. Um, and it's, it provides a really great opportunity to see what, what your friends are drinking. Because you can add your friends on Untapped, as well as um, see what other people are drinking around you. So I could pull up the Untapped app uh, at the moon and see, oh, like three people are checked in this beer, um, and they gave it a four stars. I'm going to go check that out. Um, so Untapped is a great app, but it has some limitations. Um, unfortunately, your data isn't, isn't yours. Uh, it's a freemium model. But for $5 a month, you can pay to get a CSV of your data in, in almost perfect uh, formatting. So you don't have to worry about it. So th th there's your data again. <laughs> so you, can, you pay $5 and you get your data, and you get all these great stats. It's really amazing. You get um, the beer you drank, the brewery, the style, ABV, alcohol by volume, 
uh, IBU, which is uh, a technical term. I'm not exactly sure about it. it that one, yeah. It, that, that is uh, something for beer people that know more, it more than I do. Uh, description, check-in location. You can leave a comment to say, like, oh, this was a good beer, this is a bad beer. Uh, rating, date and time, origin country, origin city, origin district. It's really great. You get a lot of great data from it. Um, and I would have used my own data to, to kind of explore my own data, but I, I kind of got, got in late to the game. I only had about like 30 check-ins over the course of the past year, um, which to some might be a lot, but um, and now we're going to enter in the, the other two members of this story. And those are my friends Dom and Ben. They, as you can tell by their beautiful mugs, wow, he's really whitewashed. I didn't realize that. But, um, Dom and Ben are untapped power users. In the last year and two months co combined, they have checked in almost 1,100 beers. Um, so you can, you can do the math there. Keep in mind, it was senior year of college. It was senior year in college. And they did go to the moon once for like two weeks straight. So you can, you can understand that they would have great data to look at. So they were they're ni nice enough to give me their data. They're both untapped pro users, so they just downloaded the CSV and sent it to me. And that leaves us with a question. Because uh, in political science, you always have to have a research question so you can like solve stuff. So the official research question of, that I was wondering is, can Ben and Dom's untapped data help them drink beers they'll like more often? So using their data, that's why I sought out to, to go explore. Um, so to begin with, we're going to do some simple starter stats, just some really, really basic stuff. Um, uh, one thing that we can look at pretty easily is most frequent locations. So Dom, not surprisingly, Crescent Moon Ale House, number one. Number two, the Huber House for uh, German Beer Hall. That's the basement of the, of the moon. Tech, so. <laughs> he's, he's a little technical in that. I, I, you don't have to d check in in the basement, but Dom has. And then um, Dom's third one is the Dubliner Pub. So yeah, Dom's data was primarily at beers and other locations. Um, and j just to reiterate, these guys check in every single beer. They, they are meticulous about it. Um, now, before going to Ben's most frequent locations, does anyone here work at Flywheel? Is it any Flywheel? OK. Uh, well, you guys will be happy to see this. The second highest place where Ben drinks is at his, at his job at Flywheel HQ. So, that, I guess that tells you about Flywheel. It's a cool place. They got a lot of great beer there. So, um, all right. So moving on, uh, check-in times. All right. So using a tool called Tableau, Tableau, I was able to aggregate the data um, and look at what times they all their check-ins were at. So on the left side, on the x-axis, that's uh, midnight, uh, progressing throughout the day. So I don't know if you can tell, but um, Basically, the spikes are at 9 p.m. They tend to check in the most at 9 p.m. before tapering off. Um, Dom is in the red. Ben is in the blue. Uh, there's a little spike around uh, 2 o'clock for both of them. Apparently, they like afternoon beers. And Dom is the earliest. He has checked in beers at as early as 9 a.m. So uh, I'll have to talk to him about that one. But um, surprisingly, no beers checked in at 6 a.m. But I guess, uh, I guess college wasn't that crazy. It is Creighton, after all. Um, so moving on to some more stats, uh, distribution of ratings. This is called a histogram. It looks at the frequencies of uh, their ratings. And so the first one for Ben, um, you can tell that he has a pretty, a pretty positive skew. Um, the little white thing in the middle is uh, the median, and his median is at 3.75. So he tends to give beers a pretty high rating on average. Uh, Dom, on the other hand, has a much is is, is more dis, you know discerning in his uh, rate giving I guess he he's not afraid to give really low ratings definitely not and uh, he his uh, median rating is a three so he's definitely more um, uh, I guess normal uh, it's more of a normal distribution in in uh, rating but these things are just these things are just basic statistics uh, we're going to do some linear regression modeling. Uh, linear regression modeling it looks at causality to see what factors might affect other factors. Um, and so when I was looking at the data, I found that alcohol by volume, so the percent alcohol, 
positively correlated with ratings. So I was looking, I was interested to see maybe the higher alcohol by volume, maybe that's that they're higher, they were more likely to rate it higher. However, looking at their, uh, the, their regression plots, unfortunately, um, even though there is some relationship and it is statistically significant, the R squared, um, which is like the stats speak for um, the, value, the model fit or like how good the model is, is 0.05 which is only explains 5% of the variation. So basically alcohol by volume only explains 5% of Ben's uh, ratings variation, which isn't, which isn't a lot. Um, it's not what we're shooting for. And obviously there's a lot more you can do with multivariate regression modeling, but I, this isn't for a class and it's not my job, so I didn't want to do that. Um, and then what's interesting, but not surprising, is that Dom's, Dom's data was even less explained by alcohol by volume. He has an R squared of 0.01, so only 1% of his data variation can be explained by um, alcohol by volume. Again, he's more, he, he goes all over the place. He, I don't think he, he's very uh, picky by that. So that leaves us with a question. What are we going to do to figure out w what beer they should drink? Um, and so I skipped a couple intermediate statistical methods and went straight to uh, algorithms. So. The algorithm I applied to their data set is an evolutionary analysis algorithm. And um, just like Charmander evolves to Charizard, this algorithm looks at different subsets of data to figure out what is the most optimal subset. In this case, we're looking at the, the biggest difference from the average rating. So this optimizes the data to look for the biggest both positive and negative difference from the average rating that they have. So it, it goes through 500 iterations and it, it, it kind of makes little tweaks, kind of like evolution, to see which, which is going to work better. And it keeps the good ones and then it throws away the bad ones and it keeps tweaking the good ones until we get an, an optimal subset. So this is, this is um, maybe more appropriate for huge data sets, but it can also be used for our, our smallish data set here. Um, so after running the evolutionary analysis, uh, I found some of Ben's best beer bets and Ben's worst beer bets. I found that Ben's Denver beers, on average, he gives a 0.5 rating higher than his average. And more specifically, Great Divide Brewing Company, he gives almost an entire point higher rating than his, his, than his entire uh, beer rating average. So if Ben wants to get a beer, he should probably stick with Denver beers, and in particular, Great Divide Brewing Company. It makes sense that he's from Denver, so I guess that kind of could explain some of the bias there. But um, and then Ben's worst beers, malt liquors, he gave a negative 1.8 rating to, so he should stay away from those. Next, we're looking at Dom's best beer bets, and uh, Dom's best beer is Boulevard Brewing, which got above uh, a 0.8 um, score above his average rating. So that is, uh, that's actually kind of interesting because Dom's data is much more varied and for one beer to get 0.8 above is uh, pretty significant for Dom. So I'd recommend that he just stick with Boulevard. Uh, but again, it makes sense because he's from Kansas City. So <laughs> a, little bit of, a little bit of bias there. Um, and Dom's worst beer is Anheuser-Busch. Uh, so Bud Light, I, it could be the KC-St. Louis rivalry, but he really, really dis dislikes Anheuser-Busch based on this uh, algorithm. Um, next, looking at the, um, the combined data, um, so it's reconnecting, okay. Mm -hmm. So next I ran the algorithm on their combined data to see what they should do if they um, are drinking together. So if they're drinking together, what are the beers that they should drink to maximize happiness, and what beer should they drink to minimize sadness? Uh, and they found, I found that Fort Collins beers, they both can agree, are on average a lot better. And then Colorado ales are also, they, they seem to have some consensus on liking Colorado ales better. And that, as you can see, is uh, much higher than the average of, um, that they had. And when they're together, they need to both avoid Coors, which is also a Colorado beer, but apparently it's not in the same vein as the other beers that they were liking. So when they're together, I'd recommend they uh, drink Fort Collins beers and Colorado ales. Um, can you click join? There we go. Okay, so that was our adventures in beer and data. 
Um, if you guys have untapped, um, maybe you can do some data analysis yourself. It's just $5 to download it once. Um, the tools I used were RStudio to do the programming and uh, ggplot2 to uh, do some of the graphs. Tableau and Graph Sketcher. Works cited, I use Google Images. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions if you have any. Yes. I, I mean, beer consulting is that is that what it sounds like? I, I feel like I feel like we we should talk after this. Maybe we could set up an API. Yeah, I haven't thought about that, but if I mean anything's possible. Did you look at the relationship between uh, 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 the uh, the uh, how high of the score that they uh, rated each beer and the time that they drank were like? I did, you know, yeah. beers that they've already had before then. Yeah, no, that was actually on my list, a time series analysis to see if they got more positive as the night went on. Um, that actually might be my next, that might be my next step. Um, because I think they said that, they have confirmed with me that they do, they have rate, um, rated some beers much higher that they normally rate like much lower earlier in the night. So, um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I haven't, I didn't include that in any of this analysis, but I think that would be a, a good, fun thing to look at for Another sure. Another thing related to that is, uh, is the app really easy to use if you can still use it at two in the morning after you have yeah, five, really six beers? <laughs> it, that's a good question. It's pretty, it's pretty user friendly, pretty, pretty clean interface. Uh, the, the slider, you just slide to give a rating, so you don't have to like type in anything. So. Uh, yeah, I suppose there might be some beers left off after a certain point of the night, however, so, I don't know, yeah. Have you done any analysis on how they rated the same beer over time? Uh, that I also was going to look at. Um, I didn't really know how much time I had here, but that's, that's on my to-do list as well. I think that would be kind of interesting to see if, over time, their, their ratings varied at all. Yeah. I guess to add on to that, maybe, like, the difference between a draw and a bottle slash can. Yeah. Um, that would be... I don't know if they, um, it doesn't have a category for a uh, bottle, but they, they, they also post a lot of pictures, so you can probably like figure it out for the most part. Um, that would be an interesting set of analysis to do as well, I think. Yes? You kind of alluded to it at the beginning, but we're very lucky to live in a time where we have lots of different beers. Yeah. So I always think about people who are maybe older or live in smaller towns and don't have access, yeah. is there kind of a method here that you could sort of coach someone who's a Bud Light drinker into trying something different? Like showing yeah. them, here's something similar, but better, you know? I, th I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. I yeah. feel you could just show them like, oh, other people that like this, like this, and then you could easily introduce yeah. them to, yeah, that's a good idea. There's so many services that could yeah. Uh, no, I was about to do a k-means um, to see the clustering, um, but I didn't. I have a, like a lot of models I have in my backlog, um, but I just did the evolutionary analysis and linear regression, kind of some simple things for. But yeah, I've, I, there's endless. You know, this this is only the beginning of what you can do with a data set. It's a great data set, and uh, you could do a, a lot more cool things and spend a lot of time. Can you do a I, I mean, they'll have a lot more data next year, so yeah, I think it would be good. I, I'm curious if you could uh, set your heading times and maybe give the public access to your data as you're developing it. Yeah, so I would have to talk to Ben and Dom. They, have, they gave me their CSVs. They said they would be willing to public, or publish the data, but they would want to leave out some of the comments because, <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the four, I'll just say the fourth and seventh most common words for Dom are very explicit words. So, um, yeah, but yeah, I would be, I, I'd be willing to post on GitHub with their permission and maybe do some further analysis on it. Anything else? Yes. Is there any way that you could take uh, several users' data and uh, do some of the work that you did here, maybe some others, and come up with an authoritative ranking list of beers? Like, uh, wine points for wine. I, I bet you could. I bet. Um, I, the, like I guess the only limitation I could see now is um, the number of data data sets I'd have. Uh, so if I could somehow get access to 
Untapped keeps their API pretty locked down. They don't want too many requests from like just random people. So if I could somehow get access to that, I'm sure like you could easily put something together to kind of make, like you said, like the authoritative list of best beers per like ranking. Um, so, so you I, could build a business around that. I, I could, yeah. And I, I'm not an affiliated with Untapped, but maybe I'll maybe I should talk to them soon. <laughs> Any other questions? You guys can add me on uh, Untapped at Matt Hoover. It's just Matt Hoover. I think it's the last up towards the top. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it was a fun project, and I would I would recommend uh, that's my username. Uh, I'd recommend you guys uh, check out your data as best you can, and if you if you don't want to do it, send it to me, and I'll I'd love to look at data. Love looking at data, so. If there are no more questions, I thank you very much for coming.